Hello and welcome back to another episode of the MXGP21 Korean Mode. In today's episode, we are off to Lamel in Belgium. For memory, this is a quick track. We are making our debut on Husqvarna. I'm looking forward to this one. I'm expecting big things. Let's see, can we go after at least a set of podiums, at best a few race wins. So here we are starting or qualifying lap. Now, the pace is good. Pace is very good. You can see currently we're in P13, which is the highest we've been all year in any qualifying session. The AI in the qualifying sessions do simulated times of what they would do when they're not stuck behind my slow ass. And they are usually six seconds quicker than me on a bad day for them. And you sometimes are over 10 seconds. Well, in this one, two seconds is what they're ahead of me. So coming into race one, you can see 0.7 off in sector one only, which is pretty damn good for me. But as I was thinking, coming into race one, I'd have some serious opportunity to go for a race win in Lamel. So I was thinking to myself, is it the track? Does the track just suit my riding style? It's fast, it's flowing, it's hectic. Or is it the bike? Or is it a mixture of both? So I have yet to figure it out because I haven't done a second race yet with this. But it feels pretty good around here. It does back up the form of what it felt like in um, the challenge duel I did with uh, Van de Moosk in Mexico. But uh, yeah, it just feels pretty damn good at the moment, so I have a lot more confidence in it. And uh, you'll see that during two races, I'm able to ride it a bit more aggressive. And uh, that confidence just comes with speed and time, and the, the whole thing adds up to a much more competitive package. But we're getting now towards the end of the lap two, and a bit seconds off. This last sector here is a real quick sector, and we're pretty quick through here. See now, straight to the line, and across the line we come, we're going to go, we stay at P13, we're only just under 2 seconds off, 1.9 is the gap, which is the smallest all season by far. Now race 1, the 1 minute board is held up, I did change my boots and my helmet as well, some of you might notice, just to fit in better with the new team. I love the, uh, how the green stands out, but what can we do? We've been getting lightning starts the last rounds. Can we do it? Not particularly. But we cut to the inside. We'll just leave off a small bit, small bit of contact. And it is Van de Moosk who gets the hole shot, but we managed to just take the inside line. Don't have the lead yet, but we just drift out into his one, and we take the lead. Now, what can we do? We didn't get the hole shot, but now we have the lead early in race one. Will it be possible to pull pain and get away bit of a mistake there again first race for the team so I'm still a bit nervous of I don't want to crash I just don't I don't want to push too hard too early so I'm in the opening lap here I'm just focusing on trying to keep it clean and uh, getting a bit of a gap build up if I can to someone behind but this track is pretty fun a lot of it is flat out third fourth gear and you're just having some great time with it but uh, the bike feels pretty good and then big moment for the championship Viale in P2 crashes in a very high speed sector which means he will lose a good chunk of time. And we're pulling a bit of a gap here. Again this sector here we are rapid. Third, fourth gear over this little kicker. You just land down that face then bounce off the face that and up into this lovely bit of sector here. We fast forward now. We're just coming to the end of the normal race time. And that is... The Yamaha of Renoir, I think. And he has been pulling the pin in. Now, they have all caught me, you can kind of see. But my, I was taking it pretty handy. I wasn't really uh, pushing to her because I just wanted to kind of... I, I was quick enough that I could ride at a limit to keep them behind. And I was pretty comfortable in the lead. And now they've all kind of caught me. Now, there is a bit of a gap between second and third. But it is Renoir in P2 on the Yamaha. But we are making... A very good race one here. Oh, coming up to the line now, we'll have two laps to go. I didn't actually realise at the race, during the race, that it's such a group of riders behind me. I was focused so much on just basically not crashing, getting in the right ruts, keeping the right line, and doing our best for the race. But it, I felt like on this one, the more I pushed the Hozaki, the more it was kind of restricted me and <laughs> resisted 
Whereas this, I kind of likes being ridden, ridden aggressive because I try to do what I do with the Kawasaki. So it goes, alright, this is my pace. I'm going to kind of go to 99% of that and just ride around, not crash. But a big mistake there. And luckily for me, the Yamaha kind of got caught up behind. This time now it's uh, Gertz who's into P2, so he's past the team out. So it's a Yamaha 2 3 as it stands. A lap and a half left in race one here in La Mel in Belgium. Probably this and Megoria so far, my favourite two tracks, mainly because I've been quick at them. But Gertz is on our tail, this race isn't done yet. Will be crucial now this is round six of 13 so we really need to start taking points off of the points leader jed beaton who is not in top two at the moment or top three from what i can gather so if i can come home get the 25 points it will be pretty good for me get that section absolutely perfect there i find just the hard i ride it it's, it's very weird it's, it's going to take me time to get up to this bike because i've been I think I have some bad habits installed from the Kawasaki because the way I had to ride it to be slightly competitive. Whereas this, this thing, it wants to be ridden a different way and I'm probably just not giving it what it wants. Because when I open up my riding style and ride a bit more free, you see I pull away from Gertz there when I started to ride a bit more loose. And that looks like it might be Jed Beaton in P3. I saw potentially a black set of uh, motocross gear. We'll come up now to start the final lap. We've yet to win race one of any event so far this year. We've won race two in Megoria. And this is our best chance yet. So I definitely think double podium, if not a double victory, should be the goal for this round. As you just saw there, P2, Jaeger Gertz has crashed. And then I just felt to myself, that's it. This is my race. He tried to go with me, he couldn't. He's probably quicker than me, but he was trying to make overtakes, but couldn't do it. And then it is beaten in P2. So unfortunately, it isn't gonna be huge gap pulled in, but there's enough races left in the season. If I can start to put myself on top, big mistake there as well, though. We get actually in real close. I remember then seeing beaten think of myself, oh no, and I start making mistakes here. Beaten is 0.8 behind, it's less than that. But uh, that was just weird physics where the bike just pinged off a bit of kind of, bit of dirt really, I don't know what to say about that, that unfortunately does happen a lot in this game. It happens less with the Husker van or so far, but again I don't have as many kilometres on this as I did with the KXF250. But we're coming in now to last 30 seconds of this race, we nailed the section here, this is pretty flowing this sector. And we've pulled the gap over P2 which is still beaten, it's a big group battling for the podium it looks like there's a mistake there as those riders have split into two groups but we're coming home now this is going to be our first victory in our first attempt with the husker van of 100 percent record if we can win it and it's just so enjoyable to ride this bike it really improves the game overall and now it's ruben fernandez in p2 which is good for me because he's not really a championship threat not that i know of but uh he takes points off beating for me we would be happy but we come up to the line We've done it. Let's start to finish. Nice little whip across the line. And it's going to be Jed Beaton, I think, who's taken P2, unfortunately, which he did. So he only pulled three points. Fortunately, he pipped Ruben Fernandez on the last lap. But a victory in race one. What can we expect in race two? So once again, I'm going to start and try and get the best launch as possible. And we absolutely nail this. We can see him. We just leave Jed Beaton. So good of a start. We get a wheelie. We just take a gentle in here. They kind of go over the outside. I lose the rear. And the game doesn't know which one of us got the hole shot. And I believe Jed Beaton crashes there. It doesn't come up saying he crashed. But it looks like he lost the rear and did come off. So into the lead. Just like race one. Can we just pull away? Ruben Fernandez is P2. So it isn't beaten in P2. He came off as well. But we're instantly putting a bit of a gap. Now I have a bit of confidence. And I'm just right and giving it. I'm kind of writing a bit more free now because I believe my head beating has crashed at this moment in time. And I was kind of giving it everything. A small mistake there though. Again, just a physics kind of letting me down a small bit. Front day four is kind of just pinging off a bit of the jump. But anyway, we push forward. We have a nice little gap building. Don't know who's in P2 yet. You can see it is absolutely nailing the jumps and just flying through these sectors. Taking such a high air because I have so much corner speed which this uh, Husqvarna is allowing me to take. I 
think the uh, livery really reminds me of the, the uh, TM, really, the kind of blue and white the colours. I wouldn't be surprised at some point during the season I call it a TM, but uh, whatever it is, it's doing the job so far. We got our best qualifying of the year, we got race one victory, and now we are leading and looking dominant in race two. Now, there is one man who looks to be quicker than the rest, and he's pulled me in. I've pulled away from everyone else. Up to the line we come, we've got a minute left in this, so this will be lap, last third of the race, that's the third last lap. It looks to be running no, and we lose the rear, big mistake, and there's actually two riders. I've lost the lead. So I was in my own world there, and that's another rider, so uh, Van de Moosk has unfortunately crashed after he passed me. But now, the ball's in my court, can I pull something out to catch and pass this Yamaha rider? I was kind of cruising, riding pretty comfortable, but look at the pace he has, and now, I've pulled the pin, I started riding like hell loose. I just absolutely was flowing as fast as I could, trying to do qualifying laps. But unfortunately, that Yamaha is rapid, especially underneath that fella Renault. He is absolutely flying at the moment. You can see the gap he had over the rest of the field to catch me. And he's slowing there. We thought about it. We actually made a bit of a mistake on entry because we were so fast in. We hit a bit of a bump and it threw us off. But we're right on the back wheel of him now, almost. Six tenths off, fourth gear, just banging it through here. And uh, we're even jumping further than him, which is nothing you'll ever see me do compared to the eye on the Kozaki. And again, we go really aggressive in. It's our best chance here if we can get near him. But unfortunately, he just pulls away again. We're pushing to the limit to catch him. But we can't really get alongside him or get close enough to make an attempt. He goes for a wide sweeping line. And he pretty much has pulled it back into his court so it looks like he has this one unless he makes a mistake himself so fortunately he did catch me so quick and passed me I was kind of thinking was that one no his pace is going to be rapid and it was we were riding quite well but he's pulled the second and a half over me now in one lap so I think the writing is on the wall here and pretty much as we come across the start finish line we have two laps left Jed Beaton isn't behind me so I was thinking in my head PT will do. We lose three points. It's not the end of the world. It's good for the championship. And now here we are on the last lap. We actually have a few other riders who caught us. So again, we kind of went into cruise control and just cruise to bring us home. Didn't want to over exaggerate anything and crash. And that's a uh, Jäger Gertz. And it looks like it's the Kozaki of Musk. And I think he is alongside. I don't know actually who the third rider was there. It might be Ruben Fernandez. But we have not much left now in this. We're on the final lap. At best we're going to get is a 1-2 race 1 victory, race 2 coming second. It would be good overall. I would have liked to get double victory, I've yet to do that. But uh, judging on how I feel with this uh, Husqvarna, it mightn't be that long away. You can see Renault's only put 10 seconds on him, so his pace is pretty rapid and not many laps. He does come across the line to take race 2, but he's not an immediate threat in the championship. And we come up to the line, he's in the 50, we're in the 56s on the last half. Nice whip to end off this round. And we are probably going to take the points lead after that in this round. So let's see what that does to the championship. Maxime Renoir, me in second. And Rowan van der Moosk coming home in P3. Viale fourth. And that was beaten further down. So he comes fourth and we pull 11 points back on Jed Beaton. Pull back uh, six on the Yamaha Raider of Jäger Gertz. So pretty decent round for myself. We come home with the number one play for that round. And yeah, we look at the championship. I did feel a bit disheartened when I realised Beaton had such a big lead still over me. And the funny thing is I have actually more round wins than him. He's only won the one. So he's obviously been just ultra consistent because... P2 is Jaeger Gertz, which is three points to me, and then there's a huge gap up to Jed Beaton. So I was a little bit downbeat when I realised that. But what can we do going forward to this? This Husqvarna is good. I hope I'm good enough to uh, make the difference to potentially win this championship. We're going into round seven now, so we're at the halfway point. High 20s is the points cap. Will we be able to do it? Let's find out in the next episode. But once again, thank you all for watching. If you did like it, drop a like down below. 
So it's great to see more and she'll catch you all in the next episode to see if we can go and chase Jed Beaton down because he's being a bit quick. But we're on equal equipment now. Both races we beat him. Positivity. We should be able to do this if the last races aren't as tough as the first ones we'll see. But I don't know. Catch you on the next one. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.